wine is fun. Wine is supposed to make you excited. It's supposed to make you feel warm and fuzzy and share incredible stories with your friends and family. The romanticism of wine making wears off very quickly when your hands are all cracked up and your feet are all aching and you're mentally and physically exhausted. But at the end of it all, you realize that it's just a miracle that this stuff gets in the bottle. So Wine Whoopie is, 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 is a celebration of this beverage. Call Kevin Zarelli. Calling Kevin Zarelli. Well, my friends, we've made it to the season finale of Wine Whoopie. Sit back, relax, and enjoy these gorgeous views of our beloved Hudson Valley region as we meet our episode's featured producer. Today I'm at Millbrook Winery, a place so revered because of its influence on the region and for its expertise in growing vernifer varietals. Let's try some Pinot Noir. So I'm here with David Bova, the general manager here from Millbrook Winery, and we're here in the loft. Cheers. Cheers. So tell me a little bit about Millbrook. Millbrook, we're in our 36th year, 36th vintage. Um, John Dyson and I started Millbrook back in the early 80s. John, is, he's an agricultural economist, graduated from Cornell. And when I was uh, probably about your age, I moved to New York City, I worked in advertising, and at that time, John was Commissioner of Commerce for New York State. Remember, way back when, it was hard to, to get a, a liquor or a wine license. And John was instrumental in signing the Farm Winery Bill back in the early 80s, which dramatically cut red tape and were a product of that. John's famous for starting the I Love New York campaign when he was Commissioner of Commerce. Through his tours of all of New York State, he met Dr. Konstantin Frank, who was a Russian immigrant who moved to the Finger Lakes and who was growing vinifera grapes, French varieties, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Cabernet Franc, Merlot. And Dr. Frank convinced John to plant vinifera in the Hudson Valley because at that time, this is now 1980, no one was doing it. John Dyson and I made a couple of vintages in his garage, realized we weren't winemakers, and we hired John Graziano, who is a Cornell grad. John is our current winemaker, and has, John has been our only winemaker. Last year, we saw close to 20,000 people come through the winery, so we've become quite a tourist destination. So how'd you get started here, John? Well, I had worked in a startup winery over in New Paltz and met John Dyson at couple tastings during that time and then heard he was looking for someone to develop the vineyards here and came to work for him. We sorted through the different varieties over the first several years that we were here and kind of have settled on uh, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Tokai Friulano, which is kind of a wild card that we found, mm -hmm. Cabernet Franc, Riesling, Gruner Veltliner, Gamay Noir does well. So what vineyard are we in here? This is our Castle Hill Riesling. You can see uh, the, the clusters here. They'll probably start to flower in a couple probably weeks. Probably in another week, week or, or so. Yeah, a week yeah. or week and a half, yeah. When you look at a, a grapevine, um, are you looking for like what you just did there? Are you decide like leaf thinning? The past couple weeks, we've knocked off some 
tertiary shoots. So we try to thin a few of those out. It opens the canopy up a little bit better and lets the remaining fruit set better and ripen better. Stress-wise, we, you know, we've got it all. <laughs> so, uh, plenty, of, plenty of stresses from cold, wind, rain, disease pressure, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> everything going on all the time in New York. I mean, that isn't really an issue that we think about too much. It's more like just having balanced vines with the, the right number of primary shoots mm -hmm. and the, the right kind of crop load. New York City, a town built of concrete, steel, and the American dream. Like Sinatra said, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. For 86 years, Sherry Lehman has been getting their customers inebriated on the finest wines and spirits hard work can buy. This post-prohibition establishment has catered to the likes of Chateau Latour, Domaine de la Romani Conti, and Dom Perignon. The physical energy of these bottles and the juice inside them are enough to make anyone's palate burst with envy. I'm trying to always wonder why am I here? Why am I doing what I'm doing all of these years and loving every minute of it? People say, when are you gonna retire? I say, why would I want to retire? I get paid to eat and drink, ladies and gentlemen, and travel the world. So let me set some criteria. Well, I'm gonna put out wine number one. You've never been here before, don't pick it up. Why? For the new people in here, I wanna look at the color. I don't wanna just down it, it's not tequila. I wanna look at the color. I want the smell, which is the most important thing. 95% of taste is smell, and I want that long before we go into putting it into our mouth. The other thing I've learned is always get your information in before the third glass is tasted. Burgundy. It's an area in France, mid-east part of France. We're talking about the Cote d'Or. Everybody say Cote d'Or. Golden Slope. You know what's a Golden Slope? It's because of the, the way that the whole thing, the sun hits it. And that's where the best wines come from. Every single wine you're having today, by law, must be 100% Pinot Noir. Ah, the Burgundies. Tu sais bien ton dans mon vent. That's French for, you'll soon be in my belly. First of all, I ask you to take a look at the color of the wine. What is the color of the wine? What actually is the color? You say red, but is it really red? What do we got here? Talk to your neighbor. Talk to your neighbor. What are you getting here right now? It's a little bit of a pale red, kind of a garnet color. That's good shit. I haven't even tasted it yet. Smell it once. Don't drink it. Smell it a second time. If you've never been with me before, you'll hear my, some of my students doing it right now. Put your hand on the top. Put your hand on the top. This will change your life. This is called aromatherapy, ladies and gentlemen. It's not just about the wine. Ready? One, two, three. Open it up. When we originally started here, we literally had 31 different varieties because we didn't know what was going to grow. There was no data about growing vinifera in the Hudson Valley. We're proud to say we started growing Cabernet Franc sooner than anybody here. We've been here the longest growing vinifera. And it was sort of dumb luck. This was back in early to mid 90s. John Dyson was very good friend with a guy named Bruno Pratt. And Bruno Pratt was the proprietor of Cosa Austronel in Saint Estef, France. Bruno and John hit it off. They looked exactly the same, these two guys, <laughs> when they were younger. And I have pictures I can show you, it's funny. Anyways, Bruno would come once a year and blend the wines with John Graziano, John Dyson and myself, and he would help us make our different red blends and white blends because he had such an incredible history and an incredible palate. We had planted some grapevines right on the road and we thought that they were Cabernet Sauvignon. And we're walking through and we're looking at the grapes and the morphology of the leaves and Bruno walks up and John's talking about it like it's Cabernet Sauvignon and Bruno Pratt goes up and he's looking at the leaf and he says, this is not Cabernet Sauvignon, this is Cabernet Franc. And, and he could tell by looking at the leaf. Bruno said, this is exactly the red grape you should be growing here in the Hudson Valley. Bruno knew from growing it in France, in Bordeaux, that it's an early ripening grape. It is a very tough skin grape.
The experience of having a camera crew follow me around all season has been interesting. As someone who loves being the center of attention, I'm now all of a sudden questioning my every move and having conversations about myself to myself. So thank you for taking this journey with me. Anyways, let's get back into the vineyard. It's funny, when I walk through a vineyard, it has this distinct smell to it. I, I can't, I, I just can't put my finger on it what, it, what it is. Like I can smell it now, like it's like, when I smell, I'm like, ah, oh, it smells like a vineyard. Yeah, it, it changes too, you know, if mm -hmm. it's been wet or when the clusters start to flower. So they do give off like a nice little scent, perfumey kind of scent. What is your winemaking philosophy and your style that you make Millbrook's wines in? Our idea has always been to try to make balanced wines that will complement food. I mean, there are some years where we get like really great ripeness and higher sugars where we could make a bigger, but we try to just keep the balance in the wines. That's our goal. This wine is a blend of our fruit, Long Island, and also the Finger Lakes. So this truly is a New York State wine. So this wine is 50% barrel fermented and 50% stainless. Lighter in style. And right away on the nose, a slight nuttiness, yep. which is indicative of wood. The Hudson Valley out of any of the regions in New York State has the most checkered past of wine quality. There was a lot of sweet wine made in the Hudson Valley. There's a lot of wines that weren't so good in the Hudson Valley. I'm talking about years ago. I think the wine quality has jumped tremendously over the past uh, 10 years. You know, at one time we were sort of the only vinifera winery here, now we're not. There's a lot of great wineries, a lot of great winemakers. Around here, vintage has changed, and um, in the tough vintage is making a great wine, you know, that's really, that's hard. So this now is the next wine. This is 100% barrel fermented. This is all state fruit. This is our reserve Chardonnay. And in my opinion, this is what I drink at home at night. This is your go-to? This is my go-to wine. Now I get more butterscotch. Right. This is fully barrel fermented. The leaves are stirred in the barrel to give it that creaminess, to give it that nuttiness. The fruit is really high-toned. That's again where John Graziano excels. Still a lot of fruit. It's, you know, it's not like chewing on an oak stick. No. And not at all, and it's, you know, it's really well-made wine. Mm -hmm. So this is a blend of our fruit, Finger Lakes, and also Long Island. There's not a lot of Pinot grown in New York State. Pinot's the hardest grape to grow, mm -hmm. and it's the hardest to vinify. But this is definitely a cool climate Pinot. Um, I could see a little bit of it through. 16 was a warmer vintage, so yep. probably the color extraction on there was a yep. little bit better. Yep, exactly. And I think that, you know, it's again, it's cool climate. So, you know, you're not gonna make a blockbuster huge Pinot Noir out of it. Mm -hmm. And we don't, you know, we don't try. Now we're gonna try our, our proprietor special reserve. This is the signature grape variety of the Hudson Valley. So this is 100% uh, of state bottled fruit, Cabernet Franc and a little bit of Merlot. Best selection of fruit, a little bit different barrel regime, a little bit longer. Wow, this is like, oh wow. On the nose I do get, I get this um, like. Uh, Don't use bell pepper. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's, um. Tomato basil, mm. which yeah. is really, yeah. really You're nice. Right, actually. Meditate. Meditate on this wine. See if you can isolate that cherry or that raspberry or the strawberry, possibly. You're at 30 seconds going to 45. Of the acid that's over here on the side, the tannins are a tactile sensation down the middle of your tongue. By the way, you don't taste tannin, you feel it. Fruit and tannin have to balance each other out. And that's when the wine is ready for you to drink, when the fruits, the tannins, and the acids are all in harmony to your individual taste. Nobody can dictate taste. I never, ever rate a wine in the first 15 seconds. I always wait until the final 15 seconds, right now, 45 to 60 seconds. I want to see what came about, because the acidity is going to attack you right at the very beginning. You probably got, a lot of you just got acid right away. 
then the tannin starts coming out 30 seconds later. So I want to get it when everything is balanced, like right now. Ladies and gentlemen, how many people don't care about me anymore? How many people just think, oh, Kevin's the friendly bartender tonight? Line them up. This is the largest vineyard in Burgundy, 125 acres. That is nothing, ladies and gentlemen, worldwide. These are small, these are two brothers. Small, small little guys making this wine. I can't think of anything better. It's just got, it's all fruit coming at me. It's all clean, delicate fruit. The Burgundies, my gosh. These are wines I don't get to experience often because, well, I can't afford them. I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to participate in one of Kevin's classes. They are no joke, my friends. He's been teaching wine for 50 freaking years. Now on to my conversation with Millbrook Winery's founder, John Dyson. Everything here begins with the winter. If we get a very cold winter, we get uh, a lot of uh, bud kill, and that uh, then leaves us with not much uh, in the way of fruit. 2020 is going to be a great vintage for New York because we had a very mild winter. We had the beautiful flowering season. We had a complete set. Uh, we had a beautiful summer, and every once in a while, David and I would say, uh, geez, you know, we need a little rain, and the next day or two, we'd have an inch of rain. Why should people come to the Hudson Valley? There's a, a biological reason and a practical one. Uh, the biological reason is because of the glacier left a lot of very nice uh, hillsides, uh, both sides of the river, uh, with uh, deep and well-drained soils that have a nice slope uh, to get rid of the uh, cold air. And we have the practical reason, which is uh, we're only an hour uh, to an hour and a half away from New York City, so that's why we have such an outpouring of people here. 35 years ago, when we did this, there were about 10 wineries. Uh, we're getting very close to 400 now in New York State. Wow. Get up, but get up slowly. Go home. Just go home now. It's over. Say goodbye to your new found friends. What an adventure it has been. And it's come time for us to reflect on this first journey. So let's do it the only way a New York City tourist knows how a self-portrait in good old Central Park. The Hudson Valley, it's, it's been my home for 28 years of my life. What I've learned is, is that in really, really good years, the wines are great. And that, unfortunately, in the off years, the wines are, you know, leave a lot to be desired. And that's just what you're gonna get from the Hudson Valley. It's a varying climate but this is a place where you can experiment, where you can try things. Every year is different. Each wine has a story to tell. I think that's what makes the Hudson Valley so unique is that it is an ever-changing terroir. And you come to realize that this wine region has a lot of potential. It may not get as much credit as, as it should, it's been a really amazing experience to learn their stories of triumph and you know their horror stories of when things don't work out the way they want to. I think a lot of the wineries in the Hudson Valley are learning from Millbrook because Millbrook was such a major influence on growing wines that were brought from France. Varieties like Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Riesling, Cap Franc. What they realize and what the rest of the Hudson Valley realizes is that Cab Franc is king in this area. It just speaks to the, to the terroir. It's been, uh, it's been fun. 